Well, hello again. Welcome back to my channel, Starman Astro. If you remember at the, the end of the, um, the the introduction last time, I uh, I said that I was going to show go into a bit more detail about the sort of gear that I use. Now I actually use quite a lot of gear, really lots of gear, and uh, probably too much really. Um, but I'm going to keep it simple and just show you the basic equipment that you'll need to help you take pictures of the night sky. As I said in the introduction, the main thing you'll need is a camera, like a DSLR camera, but not necessarily a DSLR. You can use a, a compact camera. But the main thing is that your camera needs to have manual settings, really, to get the best out of your night photography. If it's an automatic camera, it can be very difficult to get pictures at night. So I recommend a DSLR or, or something like a bridge camera or something like that. Something which allows you to, uh, to use manual settings and that's the most important thing. Now the next most important thing after the camera and your lens is your tripod. Now you want a really good sturdy tripod like this one. This is my main tripod that I use whenever I go out shooting the night. This, is, this particular one is a carbon fibre tripod. Uh, if you, if any tripod will do, but you'll find that the, the cheaper ones, the, um, they tend to be a little bit wobbly, so if there's any wind or if you knock them, you're going to get blurry shots. So it's a good idea to invest in a decent tripod, and even if you don't just use it for, for night photography, you can use it for all other kinds of photography as well. Invest, pay a little bit of money, for a good tripod, it, it'll last you a lifetime, probably. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about in this video, and I'll just go into a little bit more detail about this on the, on the end of the video. This is what I use to take pictures of the night sky, generally, star trails, or constellations, or Milky Way landscapes. This is a, an interbolometer that can be plugged into the camera. You can buy these for any cameras. This is probably about £10 worth, maybe $15. Um, they're very cheap, these things. Um, and what I find is that you may have an interbolometer option on your camera, but uh, I found mine to be very, very difficult to program. So what I did was I ended up getting one of these and these are much, much easier to program. So I'll show you how to program one of these. It's dead, dead easy to program. Okay, I hope you can see this. This is a close-up of the intervalometer that I use. Now I, I recommend to use these because they're so easy to set up and they're, they're, they're very cheap as well. Um, I do find that the intervalometer that's built into my camera the time lapses is not very easy to set up at all. I had all kinds of problems with it, so I ended up just buying one of these. In fact, I've got quite a few of these, and I use them for all my different cameras. Um, it's very simple. I'm just going to go through it now. Now, the first thing to do is to set the time for which you want the intervalometer to go off. And I have this one set to five seconds. So uh, we do that, and then we move on to the next one. And the next setting is the actual exposure. On this case, I have this one set to one minute. Now really, you can set your exposures for any time you want, as long as you want, but really for star trails and things like that, you're probably best keeping it to 30 seconds. You can go up to one minute or even two minutes. The only thing I would say is if you're doing time lapses, you're best keeping your exposures down to about 30 seconds or less for time lapses, because for time lapses, you want to keep your stars fairly straight so we have that set to one minute so i now move on to the next one and the next one is for the interval now the interval i have here is set for one second that's the minimum interval you can have so that's the time that the camera will turn off and then it will turn on and begin the next frame so that's on one second i always have that set to one second for star trail and now the next one is for the amount of frames you want it to the timer to do now I just set this, you can set this to any number, but you're best setting it to infinity. There's two little dashes on there that you can have. If you set that, then the timer will just keep going off and it won't stop. And that's it. Once you're happy with all that, you press set, you press start. And once you do that, the timer will then take control and take control of your camera. And if you're pointing your camera upwards at 
the stars, you'll have some nice pictures. Just another thing as well that I'll add, if you are doing exposures longer than 30 seconds, make sure that your camera is set to bulb mode, otherwise it will not do exposures longer than 30 seconds, even if you have longer second interferometers. So that's most important, just make sure that your camera is set to bulb mode. Okay, so now that you've seen my gear, in the next video, which will be the last of the introductory videos, I'm going to be taking you through the very basic um, settings that you need to take good pictures of the night sky, whether it be star trails or if you want to try and capture constellations, uh, the Milky Way. I'll just be taking you through pretty much the standard settings and that's going to be in my next video the last of the introductory videos after that video i'm hoping to get out on the road and get get out doing something do a vlog that should be quite fun so look forward to that and i'll see you next time bye